Now on BBC Radio 4, award-winning documentarian Sir Michael Scarborough Price presents Wisdom of the Aged. The Care Quality Commission last April installed recording devices in selected residential care homes. And whilst initially unaware they were being recorded, two very unique residents have subsequently agreed to the release of their candid, poignant and often spirited conversations. Days are over, you don't have to sell your body to the night. For God's sake, Dot, move over. You're all over me. What? Like a rash, get off. What are you doing? The tog rating of this dune is too high for you to be all over me. Now move over. What? Move yourself and What's your body it? over. What's a doona? Uh, you know what a doona is, love. How long have you known me? Oh, a doona? Duvet. A duvet, yes. And I think the correct pronunciation you'll find is duvet. There's a T on the end. Well, I think you might be wrong there. You're in our country now. You need to get it right, don't you? Well, let me ask you this, then. When a car is being cleaned... Why do you call it a valet? Well, I don't know. I didn't make up the language, did I? Anyway, it was you that said you needed an eye tog rating because you're skeletal. You need the warmth at night. And you know that it turns me, puts me into a coma because you've got no body fat on you. you Thank you very much, anything. yes. Right. Can I go back to sleep now? If you want, but please, could you sleep on your back? so that your breasts don't cover your mouth and they end up hearing this <coughs> the amount of times that I have to reach over in the middle of the night to save your life because you're struggling for breath I have to reach over and remove one or two of the breasts that are covering your face so check your attitude please I'll have whatever tog rating I want on my duvet. Anyway, it's a wonder I get to sleep anyway with your bloody glowing what's it in my face. What were you watching last night? I was watching Top Gear. That's the new, it's the new cast. I wasn't going to miss that. You've welcomed me into your room, and that's very nice of you, that's very generous, but it's not working. We need to set some ground rules. I think it's gone on too long now. These two weeks is like... You know, me and you are not getting on. And we're talking about attitude. Well, you're right. It's not working. We need, a, we need to evaluate the situation. You know, we argue over everything. It's not happening. And now you're making things up like I'm suffocating myself on my own, you know. How would you know? You're, you're practically comatose. You stop breathing for like six, seven minutes at a time. I told you it's too warm, and I said, well, you just wait and see what happens. I'll go into my little coma, and I'm sorry, I can't... Put to what's it for anything that... Is that another one of your northern sayings, is no, it? No, it's not. I couldn't think it. Tell phrase, you what. You know, what's the, what's the, the thing when you can't... It's not my fault. I can't be held to... What's ransom. it? Ransom. No, not ransom, Elspeth, no. I can't be blamed for anything that happens if you put me under a tog 15 duvet. Here's an idea for you. If you look over the side of the bed right now, you'll see I've got a little something for you. Where does that come from? That wasn't there last night when we went to bed. What? You... I've sourced it last night. That's part of the reason that I'm a little bit tired and cranky today is I thought it might be nice for you to have a separate sleeping area in the room. Well, I'm not going to wrap myself up in a Persian rug, am I? Where did that come from? Is that where you just make myself into a little wrap at night on the floor? Doris gifted that to me. Oh, here we go. She did. And I'm a little bit tired of you, but you're questioning me on these things. Well, I haven't even questioned you yet. I know it's lies. She's, she's bloody popped off, and now she's left you something, has she? Yes, she has. And if you had oh. the relationships in this, in this place that I do, maybe someone would leave you a little something when they died and popped off. Well, I don't make friends so that I can, you know, cream, cream off the gifts off them. 
And you hardly go out and you hardly meet people anyway, so I don't know where you got these flights of fancy that Doris has left your bloody Persian rug. And what's that? What? Is, that is, is that from her flat as well? The coat stand? Yeah. Yes. How the bloody hell did you get them back here? Well, it took me some time, actually. I, I left I left just after you went to sleep at 11. I spent about five hours dragging them down the hallway because the friction of the rug... It was like Velcro, and I had to get down on all fours, and, and I eventually came back here and I got a, a, a little uh, rope, and I tied that around myself like a little donkey, and I tied the back of it. I put a, a tiny hole in the rug on all fours, like some kind of commando from Predator, or, but it took me four or five hours, and well, I did that for you, Dot. i size it. You've done it for me. What, you, what so now i got to curl up on... Persian rug on on the floor. Yeah, well, I don't even wear a coat that I put on hook. So, what oh. do you need a coat stand for? You just went in and thought, oh, I'll have that. I thought it might be worth something. But anyway, look, I think if we put that cur- per- Persian rug under the bed, right. I would put you under there, and maybe we'll chalk up the bed on some bricks. So now From you're making the a bunk bed, is that? Yes. Is that the idea? That's the you... most spatially efficient way to do it. And I don't know why you're giving me grief. Well, because, you know, any normal person might have a bunk bed idea and actually just buy a bunk bed. But no, no you've got to go that. and rob Doris. Well, in the condition, quite frankly, that your body is, love, you're probably not going to be around for very long. <gasps> One breast off, two breasts off. And she lives. I still haven't heard a bloody thank you. Well, you're the one that got back into bed all sweaty. I did wonder what you'd been up to. Yes, and then I had to watch... I had to go on uh, BBC On Demand and watch the new Top Gear. And I tell you what, I'm very, very deeply disappointed in the choice of host that they've got. Yeah, well, I feel like I watched it and all. I I beeped an eye open while you had it on because the glow was interrupting me dreams and then I saw that bloke who looks like a you know a puppet what's his name Matt LeBlanc no the other one Chris Harris Chris Harris yes the radio one Rory no Chris Sabina Schmidt what's his surname what the ginger one (gasps) Chris Evans he looks awful what he looks awful he does no such thing he's beautiful he reminds me a little bit you know what Dad. He reminds me of Daniel Craig. Oh, my from word. From the Bond. You've got some serious cataracts going on, haven't you? You've no, got, he's It's lovely. a wonder you can see anything, to be honest. You think he's all right. I he used is. to watch... Uh, I used to listen to him on, on radio, and just his voice, it was so mellifluous. Well, I'm sure his voice is nice, but I'm not sure about the face. And I love how passionate he is. He shouts and rants and walks around the studio. Little poor little Matt LeBlanc. He doesn't know what he's doing. I don't like Matt LeBlanc ever since, ever since he was ever so slightly aloof with Rachel. Back in the 90s. I, don't really, I didn't really watch it. The Friends. world was going crazy for that. And I, I just remember the haircut that everyone had. Oh, Rachel's haircut. Yeah. Yes. I must admit, even though I, I don't swing that way, I would probably go waist up with Rachel. Right, that's nice. Yes. On a Persian rug. Perhaps. Well, why don't we invest in a bunk bed? Invest? Why don't we do it properly? You're a fine one to talk about investing. That's the reason you're here in the first place. Oh, oh, Elspeth, I can't pay for me, me bloody eating. Oh, move in with me, Dot, please. Elspeth, your best friend, your mother, your your father, I'll look after you. Well, that's not very nice, is it? I've already said thank you and that you've been very generous. Say it again. Well, I just said it, so... No, you quoted the fact that you'd said it. Say it. Well, I can say the words, but... Dot. What? Say it. Oh. Oh, here we go. She's got something else wrong with it. Oh, I've got the most awful cramp.
What have you been? Oh, well, I don't even need to ask what you've been doing. It's because you've been doing your <clears throat> high intensity workout in the middle of the night. Oh God! What was uh, George doing when you were humping furniture around? Anyway, some night manager he is. What was George doing? What do you think he was doing? He was helping me from behind. I was on all fours from the front, and you know, left and right and dragging, and he was coming up the rear and giving it a good push, you know. But I don't think he was as effective as he would have been at the front. In retrospect, I would have put him at the front and had me give it a good go from behind. So how did you convince him to help you? I mean, I know you and he are good mates and that because you go off on your little nocturnal moments yes. and he's just accepted that now. But I don't see how he's helping you thieve things from other people. What do you mean, thieve things? That was a gift. Well, you say that, but we all know it's not. I put in the time. I took little gifts around to her, and I admired that Persian rug, and I know it's worth quite a few thousand pounds, because it came from her late father's estate, right? I put the time in, I admired it, I gave her compliment after compliment, until one day she said, I'll just bloody take the thing. And, and I knew that it was mine from that moment. Well, I think you knew it was yours from the moment you saw it, to be honest with you, and that's why you put the time in, as you say. You don't go around and visit people so that you can see what you can get from them, do you? In 1932, love, a, a, a book was written called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Have you heard of that? Well, no, but did they make a film of it recently? Yes, they may have, but I think it was a satirical comedy and I think the original intent and purpose and philosophy was somewhat bastardised. So basically you're saying you went round to her place so that you could get the rug. You're not saying, oh, I had a nice friend and I'm sad that she's passed on to the other side. You're saying, I put the time in and I got myself a rug, an art stand. You can put it in that way if you want to, with your you warped want. little northern neggy mind... You can do that, Dot, but I'm telling you that if, you, as a consequence of being nice to people, eye contact, smile, enthusiasm, as you a consequence, a if you get a rug, then that's just a lovely fringe benefit of living in a way that connects deeply with other people. And you could do to learn that. Yeah, but it's funny that you've, you've never mentioned Doris and said... Oh, I went round to Doris the other day. I mean, I've never seen you leave this flat anyway. That's why I find it hard to believe. But you never say, oh, I popped round to see Doris the other day and it was lovely and she said this and she said that and isn't she a lovely friend? So draw that to its logical conclusion, love. Why do you think I might not mention my wide uh, uh, circle of friends Because it's all bollocks. You? What? Just a, just a theory of mine that it's all as the Americans would say, bullshit. What? I'll have you know that I have very, very deep, meaningful relationships with most of the people on my floor. Well, I think you I think you made that up. I think you got this little thing wrong in your brain and you think you've got relationships with people because you've found out about them because you're nosy. But actually all you do is you find out about them, see what they've got, and when they're... When they pop the clubs, you scuttle on down to their unit at the dead of night, pay off George and take what you like. I don't have to pay George anything. Well, I bet you don't. George had a number of items in Doris's apartment as well that that he had work. been gifted. That he's got a nice relationship with her. He had she a wanted them. Yes, he used she to shave her doors as well. All oh, right. Yes. That's how the world works, love. The Middle East has been doing this for, for countless centuries. And it's the way it should work. Robbing Some the people dead. call it bribery. Some people call it looting. You know, but it's just natural human relations to have something gifted to you if you're, if you're nice. Anyway, love, would you like a cup of coffee or something, love? That would be lovely. You Thank would? You. All right, well, why don't I just scuttle over here? Now, I've recently uh, come into... Um, Another acquisition, which is a Nescafe Dolce Gusto. Where did you get that from? Uh, it was... Um, mm? 
uh, I bought it. All right. Off eBay and right. had it delivered. Yeah. Yes. So you can choose. Would you like an Americano or Lungo? What's a Lungo? I, I don't know, but I think it might be African. I'll have one of those. All right, then. Now, what you do is, let me give you a little tutorial, because I don't want you messing with the machine or the settings. Do you understand? All right, yeah, I'm watching. Is it on? It not look like it's on. You press that little button there, and it glows red until the little machine. Isn't it cute? Yeah, it sort of reminds me of um, Penguin that's bending over. Oh, yes. It reminds me of, um, do you remember John Pertwee? The yeah. Doctor Who from the 70s? Yeah. That reminds me of K9. Oh, right, yeah. See yes, where you, you go with that. Do you, want, do you want me to pass you a mug or something? What you do is you take the little thingy out here and you put that in there like that. It says Lungo. And, and then you pop it in and it's green and it's ready. Give me your, give me your, your giant lady mug. All right, there we go. Thank you. And you put that down like that. And it's ready. And then you push it across the... Oh, listen to it. Listen to it. Go for gold. I must tell you, I find it quite stimulating having to listen to it. It's quite bassy, isn't it? It's good in the morning, too, because it gets things flowing. Yeah, it's making me want to go. Exactly, yes. So we'll have a bit of, uh, a bit of coffee music, shall we? Da, 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 da. Like in a lift. Now, how large would you like your coffee, love? Well, I don't really mind, but I've seen those before and I don't want it to get watery. So, just as soon as it gets. Here we go. Look at that. Yeah, Look yes. at the crema on the top of it. Have you ever seen anything like that outside of London? Well, that looks good and it's uh, nice and hot, isn't it? It, Ooh, it delivers. Yeah. A coffee at the perfect temperature, and I'm not saying this because we're sponsored by them at the home. I'm saying this because I genuinely believe it. Oh, that looks lovely. Thank Lovely's you very much. Coffee in there. Have one or Would you like a, a beef spoon, love? Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. It's a lamb spoon. Does that make any difference? I'll just do it with my finger. Thought you were expecting a visitor, weren't you? At some point, or did I imagine that? No, Gary was going to be here. Um, but unfortunately, he's been called away to a very important conference. Mm. Yes. He's very high up in the organisation. Yeah, it's a real shame, that, isn't it? Doesn't, uh, doesn't get an awful lot of time off that lad, does he? No, he works sensationally hard, but he's doing it for his family. He's doing it, he's doing it because his father did it and his father before him. We come from a very long line of hard workers, don't you? Probably wouldn't understand that. Oh, I understand that more than most. Do you? Oh, what surprises me is that he's, you know, you say that he's working to keep his family and all that, and, uh, well, who's his family? You're his mother. You bloody made him and he can't pop over here. Makes me angry. Part of loving someone is allowing them to, to go and do what they want in life. Well, yeah, I agree with that to a certain extent, but when's the last time he came and saw you? He comes all the time. Well, that's not true, is it? I I get deliveries for my birthday and for Christmas and for Easter and for Mother's Day. What's he sent you? He sends me flowers. Oh, right. And he sent me a card and he sent me... Some more flowers. Well, that's very thoughtful. He's really, a good, he's a good boy. He's a good boy, and I won't have a word suggested otherwise. No, no, absolutely. Just wondered when he was going to come and see you. That's all. He'll be here very soon. When he's when he's finished with his conference, I'm sure he'll pop in and say hello. And where's the Where's the conference? At Tahiti. All right. Yes. You've been there, haven't you? I have been there. Yes, yes. Back in the day? What were you there for, an holiday? Mm, no, we went there to celebrate my 10th anniversary with hubby. We had one of those um, bottomless huts over the water. Oh, lovely. I tell you what, it was so convenient, my hubby loved it, because all he had to do in the morning around 9 or 10 o'clock was just pop his little bot-bot over the side and feed the fish. He used to laugh. 
I'd say, Love, what are you doing out there? And I'm feeding the fish, love. He was such a character. And when we'd walk, we used to have a property, you see, about 20 acres out in the bush. And uh, we'd go for a walk occasionally. And we'd, he'd loved nature and he'd walk around there and he'd, he'd do this enormous pardon, like a, a, big, a big one, like a trumpet. What a fart. Yes. You call it a pardon? Yes. That's the first I heard. What's the polite term that you use up north for fart? Well, I don't know. You say you trump, but that's not very polite, is it? I don't know. Pardon's a bit vague. Well, everyone knows where I'm from. Well, that's Contextually, good, we all understand. He did a pardon. Pardon? He did a pardon. Right, so he's up in the bush there and he does a giant pardon because he used to get a lot of wind. He used to eat a lot of fermented German meat products. And uh, he would look around and he'd say, Lions! And the joke was, of course, we don't have lions in Australia. It was quite, quite funny at the time. 